Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. Today I want to show you how to create these sound activated uh, shape layers based off of the new Google animations for their new logo. If you haven't seen already, let me just bring it up. Google has a new logo. I was watching it and I saw these little dots in there kind of bouncing around and moving. And the one that caught my eye was when it went into this kind of a look. And so I wanted to recreate that in After Effects and I didn't want to just hand animate everything. I wanted it to be able to um, react to any audio file I stick in here. My first thought was, let's uh, hide these, is to use the audio waveform effect and just make it kind of roundy like this, which you can create the movements, but what it's not doing is I can't choose the colors. Also, if I wanted to animate them later, like in the animation where they're flying around, they're not individual shapes, it's just all on one layer. So I wanted to create it out of shape layers. Now this tutorial has lots of expressions in it, so if you have any questions, make sure you ask them. Um, hopefully I'll be going slow enough that you can pay attention and see what I'm doing. So let's start new composition, give it a nice white background, um, and let's create our first shape layer. So I'm going to use a pen tool um, I'm not going to use a circle, I'm going to use just the pen tool. And let's just right in the center, create a line. Okay, now this line can be any color um, you want. It, you, we're going to use the stroke for this. So I've already got kind of a green color here. So make the stroke nice and thick. Then you can go ahead and delete the fill out of the shape contents. You don't need it. Um, it so down in the stroke, right here under line cap, switch that to round cap. Okay, next we're going to add to this a trim paths. So in your shape layers, under the contents, I'm gonna come here, and right here where it says add, click on that, go down to trim paths. And what this is going to do is, you can see like this. We want both the start and the end to be at 0% to start with, and then basically we want it as it goes from zero to 100, it fills out. Now what we see here though is it's not staying in the center, it's just moving from one side to the other. So we're going to add an expression to the offset. So basically what we want is when this is down at the bottom and being round, we want this to be at 180. And we want it to just kind of move in between. So we're going to add an expression to the offset. First I'm going to add an expression to the start. And what I'm going to do is value plus 0 0.0001. So it doesn't matter how low it gets, it'll still be point zero Because once it hits zero, then it disappears. And I want to show that circle. OK. Then to offset, let's first bring in a variable. And I'm just going to call this input. So my variables for input is just INP for input equals. And then let's pick whip the start and with a semicolon. Then we're going to use the linear expression. And what the linear expression is it maps one set of values to another set of values. So type linear, L-A-N-E-A-R, and in parentheses we're going to bring our input. So INP, comma, and then what it goes from 0 to 100. So we'll go 0, comma, 100. And I want to map that to 180 to 0. So when this is at 0, this is at 180, and when that's at 100, I want this to be at 0. So then we go comma 180, comma 0. So if we look down this expression, the linear, it's bringing in this input variable, and from when it goes from 0 to 100, I want the output to be 180 to 0. And with a semicolon, and now you see it keeps it nice and centered there. And that's going to be the base of the movement is using this start position. Let's bring in some audio. It doesn't really matter what it is because I'm not going to show the audio. And so I just found a quick sound effect from one of my new sound effect packs that is coming out very soon, all about digital glitches. Um, go ahead and turn that off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it and then keyframe assistant, convert audio to keyframes. At this point, we don't need the audio anymore. And in the amplitude, we look in here, there's a left and a right channel and both channels. Um, it was mono, it wasn't a stereo sound, so I don't need to worry about two different channels. I just want that one set of keyframes. Now you can see here, um, the slider is moving up and down. 
to the the music or to the sound and the clip wasn't that long so right about here you can see it's cutting out so I'm going to just take all of these keyframes and delete them and it moves a bit too fast and so I'm gonna just take these and stretch them out so if I highlight all the keyframes hold down option grab the last keyframe and it'll, it'll stretch them out because I wanted a little bit of a slower of a movement okay now we can go ahead and hide that because all we need is these keyframes so go back into our shape layer uh, let's give this a name dot one and then what we want to do is replace value with slider so you can see it's moving now if that's a little bit too slow well then we can right here we, I brought that in at the end of that so this comp layer audio amplitude it's bringing all that up there we times that by four and now the movements gonna be a lot bigger okay now the problem I have with this is if I were to duplicate this and move it then everything's going to look the same I don't want everything to look the same I want each dot to have its own movement so let's make some changes to this um, expression first off let's simplify this by adding in a variable so let's just call this a INP for audio input equals let's bring that in and then instead of this expression here what I'm going to do put a input dot value capital A for at capital T for time and in here put time minus and then put index divided by 24 24 because that's my frame rate so what this is doing is it's taking the value at a different part of the time um, based on the index and this index is the layer and it looks like I need to add another parenthesis. Okay, looks good. Index is based on the layer. So now also let's uh, make it so it again how I had the whole thing times by four. So right here um, after this expression before the plus sign, I'm going to put times four. Okay. So now as this moves, looking good. Now what I want to show you is I'm going to duplicate this layer and then move it over, duplicate it, move it over and let's watch this now you see they're all kinda of separate, they're all doing their own thing and that's what we want okay now let's take all of these get them more in the center and let's grab the colors and there's a little trick to this so I wanna grab the colors just straight from straight from this Google logo so if I were to use the eyedropper so it goes blue, red, yellow, green so this first one get my stroke use the eyedropper and try to get the blue well it doesn't it doesn't work I'm clicking on it but it's not working so the trick to that is is as you hover over instead of clicking let's go back over into After Effects grab the eyedropper hover over instead of clicking with the mouse you hit enter or return on your keyboard and it'll bring that in and I don't have to uh, click and that's how you get color samples from outside of After Effects so hover over hit return hover over the color hit return okay and that green I believe is already the same color green so now we have a very Google-like uh, kind of movement for an audio reaction. Now we can also come into all of this and we can change the stroke. See, I just highlighted them and I can change the st stroke up here. Excellent. Okay, so that's the tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Um, I thought this looked, the turns out looking pretty cool. There's a few expressions in here to make sure this all works. Let's just go over them again really quickly. 
So first we have the offset, and what we did here was we used the linear expression to offset the start as it goes from 0 to 100 to linearize this over to 180 to 0 to remap that. And then in the start, what we're doing is we're bringing in the audio amplitude from this null layer up here, and we're taking that and we're using the value at time minus the index divided by 24. So um, this index right here is index 1 divided by, or index 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 divided by 24, meaning it's the fifth frame, so it moves it um, because time is by frames and it's 24 frames a second. So that's why I did that. And then we times the whole thing by 4 in order to give it more amplitude. And then we added this 0 .0001 in order for it, if it ever hits zero, it'll still be a circle. I'll go ahead and paste these expressions down in the uh, description. And uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.